Good afternoon, everyone. It is noon, so we're going to go ahead and get started here from a snowy day in Banner Elk. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone for joining us from the Alumni Association, uh, and in particular, our alumni who are joining us as athletic staff for the Department of Athletics. So thank you guys for taking your time. I know we'll probably have some people trickling on, um, but we'll go ahead and start introducing ourselves if you guys want to just share what year you graduated, maybe what your major was as an alum, and how long you've been here and what sport you're with. So we'll start. I've got Taylor. We've already had a few conversations, so we'll let you we'll let you go ahead and get started. And if you want to, you can just jigsaw on um, find someone else on screen and pass it on. Okay. Um, so yeah, my name is Taylor Morton. Um, I played soccer. I uh, got here in 2017. Graduated or got here in 2013 and graduated in 2017. Um, after that, kind of went to a couple of different schools, uh, most recently UNCG, um, and then just got back this year to, to become the assistant coach. So, um, Aaron? My name is Aaron Barcel. I'm the assistant women's soccer coach. I got here in August of 2013 and graduated in December of 2016, um, and I played soccer here. Um, we'll go with Brad. Hey guys, Bradley Dunn, head men's lacrosse coach. Um, started my college career at Lees McRae in 2001. Um, finally made the, the walk across stage in 2012. Um, came back in the fall of 2017 to take over the reins of our uh, beloved lacrosse program here. So, Mackenzie. Hi, I'm Mackenzie. Um, I graduated in 2018 um, with a major in athletic training. Um, and then I came back in the winter of 2019. And I'm the athletic trainer for men's lacrosse, women's soccer, and men's and women's swimming. Um, Sarah? I think I'm the only Sarah, and I don't play sports at all ever <laughs> um on occasion i walk upstairs i graduated in 2016 with a religious studies and history major and i work at limbo resorts so i supervise people who play golf <laughs> and sarah is also a member of our alumni board so awesome thanks sarah and I think everyone else that we've got on the call right now are either alumni or I see we've got um, some members of our board of trustees. Um, and then we've also got uh, Craig McPhail on, our director of athletics. Craig, if you want to say hello. Hi, and welcome. Thank you all for joining today. This is going to be fun, and I'm excited to have our coaches who, who play a significant role in the development of our young people uh, on this to kind of share a little bit about what they're looking forward to and how we've kind of gotten ourselves prepared for what's going to be a very memorable and exciting and hectic and chaotic <laughs> spring. So uh, glad, to have, glad to be a part. Thanks all. Wow, wonderful. Well, we'll go ahead and if you, if you all don't mind, I'll start with just a handful of questions. And for people who are tuning in, if you all want to ask in particular our specific coaches questions about their programs or um, in particular how the fall semester uh, prepared them with their student athletes and the extra time, in particular for the soccer coaches on here, um, going into the spring and what that looked like and the precautions uh, and that you're all taking as the students come back this weekend. So maybe Coach Dunn, if you want to share a little bit about, I know your, your players are going to start rolling in this weekend um, and maybe what the fall was like for you all and some of the different protocol that you put in place. So when they come back, uh, we, you guys are full swing. Sure, sure. So with us uh, naturally being a, a spring sport, um, outside of a, a few shutdowns just for precautionary reasons that we had during the fall, uh, we were able to keep it reg uh, fairly regular. Um, we did obviously, you know, wanted to maintain uh, social distancing and uh, weren't able to do some of the drills that we normally would like to do. Uh, you know, working guys in pods, smaller groups kind of stuff, but still uh, still able to get a fantastic fall in um, to, prepare, to prepare our team for this spring. Uh, we have a relatively young team this year, uh, about 13 freshmen. Um, so it was good for them to, to get kind of that hands-on um, preparation for, for college-level lacrosse. 
Um, but yep, we have our guys uh, all starting to show up this weekend. Um, they've been working extremely hard over the break. We stayed in constant communication with them. Um, they've been checking in with me throughout, you know, showing them that they're hitting the wall, keeping their sticks loose, hitting the weight room. Um, and they are, they are fired up. They're extremely fired up. Um, obviously the opportunity to play on the brand new turf field is, uh, is something that's, uh, you know, a little added benefit for this, for this spring that the guys are excited about, especially my upperclassmen. Um, but yeah, we are, we think we're ready. We think we're ready. We're excited. We're going to put in some really hard work these first couple of weeks to get us ready for our, our first game, which is on February 10th. And now who do you open up with on the 10th? Is it a home game? Will it be the first game on the turf? It will not. I think uh, as it sits right now, I think women's lacrosse will have the first one. I think they play on February 6th. Um, we are slated to open at Mars Hill, just down the mountain from us on February 10th, with our first home game being uh, February 17th against Newberry. Okay. That's exciting. And now what about men's and women's soccer? When's the first time that you all get to compete against an outside opponent on the turf? Our first one will be the 21st of March. So we're really excited. We were able to get out there three times um, before the, the girls went home for break. So they were really excited to be up on the turf and, and playing there. As Brad was saying, we were really grateful in the fall for all the development that we were able to have, traditionally being a fall sport. Right away, we jump into preseason and you know within three weeks, we're playing outside competition. We brought in 12 freshmen. So being able to have that time to develop, grow together, fitness-wise, everything was really, really great. We play um, Barton first um, on February 21st at Barton. Um, and then I believe March, March 21st is our first game as well that we'll have at home. So, you know, having all these guys come in has been massive for us. You know, we've had a lot of leadership um, that we've had to come in through transfers. Um, and, you know, we're really excited to, uh, to get hit the ground running. And now, Mackenzie, you get to see all the different aspects of it as an athletic trainer. Uh, what has been uh, the biggest improvement that you've seen in the student athlete? Something that maybe surprised you when you think about all the different protocol that they've been uh, subjected to? And uh, what, is, what is something that you've seen that's a positive sign from the athletic training standpoint? Um, just seeing all the different athletes, um, especially the teams I work with, their ability to adjust um, to how many crazy changes. I mean, it's crazy on our end, um, being staff, um, especially being considered a healthcare facility um, and just knowing the adjustments they've had to make. I mean, a lot of these kids are used to heat and stem before practice and being able to kind of just walk in and get what they need before practice. And we've had to cut a lot of that down um, and just kind of go to essentials and kind of triaging athletes like, a new ankle sprain versus an end stage rehab, the new ankle sprain is going to get in first. Um, and so far, all the student athletes have been um, just very understanding and malleable to work with. Um, and for the most part, they follow the rules pretty well um, and listen to us and have been just very respectful of all the changes they've had to make. And um, knowing like um, I work with lacrosse and when their season was cut, um, from where I said they handled it very well um, in women's soccer. I was there for their meeting when um, their season was getting moved to the spring um, and just seeing them all take it as a positive opportunity and saying like, we have all this time to be prepared for a season um, and be prepared to fully come in and come in healthy and strong um, and just more prepared than they've ever been. Um, so I just think they've used this time extremely wisely um, and just are ready to roll as soon as they can. So uh, on that note, maybe Coach Dunn, you could talk a little bit about what it was like back in March um, when, when you had to end up canceling the season and postponing and how you've been able personally to stay motivated uh, and then motivate your young men to, because it's been almost a, what, 10 months since you all have been able to get in the field and compete. So what was that like and how, what was the motivation that for you and your team, the team? You know, it was, it, it was very tough. It was very, very tough. Um, it, it happened while we were on spring break. Um, you know, I had, I had the guys back in town cause we were preparing for 
um, our second non our second in conference game against Mount Olive. Uh, we would have played at the end of spring break, um, so we were in town, um, which made it a little bit easier. Uh, there wasn't much going on on campus, so we were really tight together. We were practicing a couple times a day, eating together. Um, but you know, I was I was in constant communication with Coach McPhail there, um, just sort of tracking as things were going on, really starting uh, that Monday. Um, it was like, okay, you know, are we going to have to move locations? Is this? And then just sort of escalated up to uh, Wednesday night um, when we got the final word that they were going to um, suspend it. They didn't, they didn't come out and straight say they're going to cancel the year. They said, hey, we're going to suspend it for right now. Um, so had to break the news over a team dinner, um, which, was, which was tough. A lot, of, a lot of tears were shed because um, I think the guys saw the writing on the wall that a suspension – probably was going to lead to a cancellation, unfortunately. Um, so a lot of, a lot of tears, a lot of hugs with the seniors. Um, but then we, we quickly turned that into uh, sort of the motivating factor through the, through the summer of, Hey, you know, you never know when it's going to end. Um, you know, we all, we all got a taste of it um, when it, when it, the rug got pulled out underneath us, but you know, it was similar to, you know, what happens if you do have a catastrophic injury, you know, you tear an ACL or, um, Achilles or something, and, and you, you can't play anymore. So, you know, we need to prepare ourselves, uh, our bodies, our minds, uh, as best as we possibly can, because you do never know when it's going to end. Um, so that was sort of the, um, the rallying cry all summer long. Um, and then once the guys got back on campus, uh, we, we, you know, we kept reminding them of it as, hey, you know, cherish these moments, because you never know when it's going to be taken away from you. Um, you know, the incoming freshman class, you know, they had the same thing happen to them as high school seniors. Um, and I honestly feel the worst for them because they don't get an option of an extra year of high school. Um, so, you know, they, they felt the, they felt the pain as well uh, as incoming freshmen. So we've just sort of, you know, used it as a, like I said, as a rallying cry almost of, of, you know, give me everything you have because you never know when it's going to end. Um, and, and like I said, the guys, the guys responded, they did a great job with it. And hopefully we can uh, carry that into uh, a few weeks and into the season. And when, when we think about the opportunity for the school to open back up in the fall and the success that we were able to have, how has that played into the recruiting for each of your sports? Being able to have the open houses and have students visit. And do you feel like it's been advantageous? How do you, how has that looked for we each of your programs? We were very, very fortunate. Um, you know, we brought several, uh, I, all, all athletics, you know, we constantly had names up on the TV screen inside the gym. And um, I, I know specifically, you know, that was one of the questions I would ask the families was, you know, how many tours are you going on? You know, who else have you visited? And a lot of them would say, you know, we haven't been able to go anywhere. You know, we've just been talking with the coaches. And so we were very, very fortunate that, uh, that Lise McRae did uh, allow us to have, limited tours obviously we weren't running full groups you know it started off with you know just one family or two families per per tour time but you know still being able to do that um and then to you know for us field sports to walk them out to and say oh by the way look at the construction on the turf and here's the renderings of it and you know the facilities master plan that we have sitting in the in the front lobby of the gym using that as a talking point um i think it we've been we've been very very successful very very successful this fall Yes, admissions being able to run full tours even throughout the summer was such a blessing. You know, it was limited groups and just one family, but for instance, we're able to bring in a class of 14 is who we already have signed for our 2021 class. And I absolutely attribute that to COVID and our admissions team being able to do such a great job throughout the pandemic um, and us being able to host them through here because a lot of them weren't able to see other schools have other options in that regard we were able to still give them almost a full full tour and experience. They didn't get to meet our current players um, and kind of have that traditional recruiting experience in that regard. But just being able to come on campus and have that experience with admissions was very advantageous for us. Yeah, it was very much the same for us, you know. Um, 
getting everybody to still see campus. And, you know, that was the thing for me when I was a player that uh, really, really attracted me to the school was the campus. You know, it's, it's beautiful. And with admissions, having those tours, it just made it even more of a selling point for being able to see the campus because you don't get to see many other campuses at the time, but you also get to really sell that, that beautiful um, environment that we have and, you know, that family environment that we have as a team. So it was very, very big for us. So Craig, what is, if you could describe the spring in one word, because I know you've been imagining it for the last few months when we think about, uh, you know, one, one person described it as it was going to be Christmas every day because there was just going to be sporting events every day. So um, in one word, what do you think the spring is going to be like? Uh, rewarding. I think you put in the time that everybody's put in to make sure that we get to this point. And, and a lot of times, you're talking about a lot of the behind the scene folks, uh, our ATs, uh, Jeffrey and compliance. Uh, we've mentioned admissions. Uh, the food service folks are, are MVPs right now. Um, there's a lot of things that have gone on to get us to this point, and it's going to be rewarding. And I think Brad's point of, you know, you never know when it's going to be over is something that. Um, really speaks volumes. I think that we've got an opportunity with, that we've been granted to play a sport while earning an education in a very unique location. And we can't ever lose sight of that. And the passion that these folks have, uh, the young people who are being led by them, it's going to be a very rewarding time to put on a uniform knowing that the game is going to count. And it means something. I think we can't lose sight of the mental health and the uh, just awareness that a young person is going through when they don't have the opportunity to compete. I think there's a little bit of an athlete in all of us. So watching our young people uh, diligently, patiently uh, prepare themselves for this is going to be fun for a lot of us and being able to pull it off is going to be rewarding <laughs> for, for uh, some of us as well. I mean, I think that there's a lot of sleepless nights that we've all had uh, making sure uh, traffic patterns and this, that, and the other are, are kind of followed. So we make sure we get this thing done and you know, it's, it's exciting. I and mean, we're going to be rewarded by, with our, all of our hard work that started back in March, that carried on through the summer, that went through the fall to where the spring is going to be just something that we all take great pride in. Wonderful. Uh, well, I'll open it up to any of our alumni who are on the call or um, other guests have any specific questions for sports or in general about uh, the Department of Athletics. Good afternoon, everyone. I do have a question, and as a trustee, I want to know if you could distill it down to one or two things that we can do as trustees and thinking about the college in general. What can we do to enhance the experience or the recruitability of our freshmen? I think so far, um, the path that Dr. King has us set on is is a is exactly where we need to go. Um, you know, he came in, you know, and just and just took over and has done, you know, brought in the facilities master plan and and following that and engaging all of us in those discussions um, really allowed us to to have a significant impact. Um, an input, I should say, and in, in, in the process of, you know, the next three, five, 10, 15 years. Um, so I would say, you know, keeping, uh, you know, keeping the foot on the gas, following what's in the, in the facilities master plan. Um, I know we have big updates coming, um, you know, to the cafeteria and to the historic commons. Um, I, I really think, you know, it, we have such a good vision I personally feel as an alumni and as a coach, I think we have such a good vision in place right now that as long as we stay steadfast to that um, and, and continue to work together and, and just um, you know, maintain the, the open line of communication, um, we'll, we will drive this thing forward. Uh, but I think we have a tremendous roadmap in place right now. Um, so I, I would say, you know, let's just let's just keep working together and 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 follow this uh, follow this plan and and maintain the communication so that we are able to continually talk about it. Uh, as I mentioned, we do have you know on our side of the campus the facilities master plan both for the Hemlock Hill and for the gym. 
Um, so it's a fantastic talking point. So, you know, for us to continually, you know, say, okay, and this is where we're at now. Um, you know, we know, like say the indoor, the indoor center, um, which would benefit all of field sp uh, sports to have an indoor location. Um, but obviously that's a, that's a multi-million dollar project because we want to do it right. Um, but to, to maintain communication with us to say, Hey, you know, yes, it's not coming next year. We understand that, but you know, if we continue down the path, it could be in the next, you know, five, seven, 10 years, um, so that we can truly give an honest, um, an honest sales pitch, if you will. Uh, I know I've spoken with a lot of my alumni, a um, couple that are on, on the call right now who, you know, when they came in and, you know, 2013, you know, it's, oh, you know, the turf field's coming, turf field's coming. And, you know, they, they have a little, you know, I mean, they're very happy for us now. They're excited for it, but it's sort of like, man, I wish, you know, I wish the promise would have been true when I was there. Um, so, you know, we, you know, we want to be open and honest with our recruits and, um, you know, if we're going to have that, that vision board out there, we want to, we want to know that, you know, we are keeping, like I said, foot on the gas and, and the vision is, is coming to fruition. It just might be, you know, in 20, 2010 or, or 2030 or 2040, whatever it may be. Um, so that we, uh, you know, can continually keep, keep our recruits engaged with, uh, with new and exciting aspects to our school. I, I, as an alumni, I'd like to say, Craig, the people that you have, uh, you called them behind the scenes while ago, uh, the publication and all the things that you're doing on Facebook and, and emails uh, are, are paying off. I mean, I'm hearing from alumni questions about athletes. Well, I mean, we never, and just something like this today, I mean, we've never done this before. So we're really getting the word out that, uh, Athletics is alive and well up at Lee's McRae, and it's uh, doing doing fine. And I appreciate that. Please pass that on to your behind the scene guys. It's making a difference. Thank you. We've we've pulled a lot of the right strings in terms of getting the right people on the right seat on the right bus, and the stories that we can share and have been sharing. Uh, from a professional standpoint, from a video content to a picture format, has always been the vision, but none of it has really truly aligned until recently. And days like today are uh, three or four years in the process of the making, but never truly wanted to go out there and take that step in the deep end unless we knew we were 100% confident that the people on the screen and what they said truly matched our vision. And so I'm excited about it. I think that we've got tremendous uh, opportunities. We're just touching the surface right now. What we've done so far uh, may have been pandemic led, but let's be honest, there are uh, incredibly talented people here that we need to continue to shed light on and share stories of. So I appreciate you recognizing that, but I, we, we've got a lot more we can do and stories to tell that's going to make even more people want to get engaged and involved with what Julia said. So I think it's part of the plan. We're going to stick with it and continue to kind of shed light and focus on some of these folks who are doing great work. And, uh, you know, who knows what it's going to lead to, but it's going to be exciting no, no, nonetheless. And, all, you know, all of you on the call, just one more thing, especially as an alumni, what do you think if you had a wish list after knowing you know, where you've been in the last 20 years as alums and you've come through the recruiting process and the student athlete process, the commencement, um, you know, going into career and life planning and then circling back here. What is one wish that you have for Lees McRae as alums that are working on staff that all of us who are on the call can help, help you get there um, after seeing the last two decades as student athletes and now alums and now staff? So I think it's something that we're already doing. You know, a lot of it is just the longevity. You know, we were all able to have such a great student athlete experience while we were here and it attracted us back here, right? To come work for this institution now. So with that, just the longevity of kind of the passion and the spirit that was invested in us when we were students and now that we get to invest in our student athletes. Um, so I think that, you know, so far everyone's done a great job with the facilities master plan moving forward as Brad was speaking about. 
but really just continuing the passion in, you know, the hiring of the right people in the right places so that, um, that it's just kind of like an overall fire when you come on campus, right? Like half the battle is always just getting a recruit to campus because once they're here and they get to see the energy and the passion of either our current players, coaching staffs, other athletic staff on campus, we feel like that kind of battle is already won and that we already have that student athlete kind of in our pocket. So I would say just um, for that passion and that fire to never, never waver or go out. I would love to, and this could be because I'm the son of a you know, small business owners here in Banner Elk. Um, I would love to see a uh, continual growth of a connection between um, not just Banner Elk, but uh, the county and, and our, our mountain community as a whole. Um, I think, you know, again, Dr. King has done a fantastic job with the, um, you know, the party in the park that we've had uh, every year since he's been here. Um, but, you know, really continually to connect um, Banner Elk with Lee's McRae and Lee's McRae with Banner Elk, um, I think is, uh, you know, we live in such a beautiful area and we're so blessed to be a part of such a great community, um, the mountain community, not just the Lee's McRae community, but you know, the mountain community as a whole. Um, so I, I would love to continue to, to deepen the relationships um, and, and really, you know, stretch our, you know, stretch our wings a little bit and know that, you know, it's not just App State up here. You know, there is another fantastic school up here that, that does a lot for the area and, and can give you everything you need. One of the big things that I, I would love to see is just a bit more connection with the players and the alumni base as well. You know, um, when I was at school, I didn't really notice how big of a family this was until I graduated. And the more you graduate, the more you meet other people and talk with other alumni and really understand a bit more of how big this alumni base is. And, you know, I think that if that's something we can get our, our players involved in as well, then, you know, they'll really start to kind of have a bit more of that longevity, a bit more of that fire in their stomach. Um, a bit more of that passion that we have now having seen everything. Craig, I don't know if this is possible, but you know, we had the camera watching. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I went to watch the, the turf and see how it looked that day. Um, is there a possibility that we might have like uh, a consistent sports day where we watch the hockey team practice or the soccer team practice. I think the more we on the outside get to know what's happening on the inside, um, it, it, it fosters that passion and it helps people um, that are on the outside see what's going on. Um, just, just taking a look at, at what's happening. I think that might be another great way of involving people. Yes, we're going to, we've enhanced our sports broadcasting. So this spring, you know, we're going to broadcast every home game we've got, and we're trying to manipulate how do we manage to do, you know, a lacrosse game and a softball game at the same time. So you're going to get a chance to watch uh, our teams play every opportunity we can, and we're going to have really good broadcasters. We're going to have really good graphics. We've already been working on commercials and other stuff that really kind of ties into that Bobcat spirit you talk about. And, you know, I, I'll just tell you this. Um, you ask us what we need. I'll tell you what we need. We need you guys to shed and spread the great things that are happening right now. There are a lot of people who don't know about Lee's McRae and Lee's McRae Athletics. They think about it when, you know, in times of past. It's a different place right now. Everybody on the screen knows it. You've got to be able to be the messengers to say, hey, have you seen what Lee's McRae is doing right now? Because when we do unveil this broadcasting, because we can't have many people come to our games, especially the indoor ones, we're going to try and tell these stories and share them. And you guys are our wonderful uh, messengers and, and be able to do that. But Julia, to answer your question, we're going to broadcast as many of those sporting events we can. We're going to do uh, a lot of different video highlights. We've got uh, a lot of things in the works that's going to make people like yourself become more engaged, more involved, and become the biggest 
uh, swimming fan you could be or cross country or track or tennis person that you may may have ever known uh, we're gonna we're gonna find a way to bring it to you in, in a unique fashion that everybody's going to be really proud of how are we going to find that information how to see and when your games are and what you're broadcasting that's first i've heard of it Everything's going to be on our athletic website. It's pretty easy to kind of look at the master schedule and calendar and look, and there'll be a video camera next to it that you can click on, and you'll be able to instantly watch our, our teams play. If you have any troubles, I want you to email me. I'll make sure I've got all that stuff in our Bobcat Club newsletters. I'll make sure that we put that on our social media sites. I don't want anybody to miss out on the opportunity to watch our teams play. Uh, it's just been too long, and we're all ready. Thanks. You know, Craig, when I look around, you know, and I see all the alums who have come back, and most of them you saw, you know, walk through the doors and compete on the field. You know, what a gift that they're, they're coming back, and they have so much Bobcat pride. And so, you know, thank you all. And, and I think, you know, Julie, you brought up a really good point. Um, is is so important for people on the outside to feel like they know what's going on. And that's one of the things we want to make sure we're doing is, you know, like Brad even mentioned, you know, transparency so that everybody knows what's happening. Everybody knows where we are so that we're being intentional with our messaging. And I think, you know, getting to see you all and do what and have a glimpse of what you do with the student athletes is, is an incredible opportunity for our alumni association. So I really appreciate you guys being taking your time to be here and, you know, we'll make sure that we share this video with uh, other alumni who weren't able to be on because, you know, what you all do behind the scenes with the student athletes, in particular recruiting and retention is one of the reasons why we're so successful. And so, you know, as alumni and as staff now, you know, I'm grateful for you to be here. And um, I know we, we're at our 30 minutes here, but does anyone have any other questions um, for our, our coaches or for Craig, our vice president of athletics before we um, and let you all enjoy the rest of your Tuesday? Great One more. Okay. Well, thank you all and good luck this season.